thank you for joining us today. I am joined by Chase today. And it is so exciting that Chase is here because I've had this unique pleasure of getting to know him through a very, um, through kind of like a reverse uh, method for me anyway. Usually I'm interviewing for people (laughs) from my show and Chase reached out to me because uh, Chase has a show and he also had PNES and he was starting, he and his friend, uh, Chef, were starting a mental health Monday. And it was just really, it's been great to get to know him as a person. And uh, it was awesome to be uh, interviewed for the Mental Health Mondays. So thank you for joining me for my show now. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. Glad you weren't deterred by the Chase and Shep show. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I, I'm so... I'm always so intrigued. Now, you are the second person that I uh, have interviewed, actually third, uh, with who has PNES, who is a, a male. Mm-hmm. And because predominantly, it's showing that more women, I think it's a huge number, like 70% women have this compar- compared to 30% male mm-hmm. um, have PNES. And I say, uh, I stumbled on that because one of the people didn't have true PNES. He had the non-epileptic seizures because he had an allergy to gluten. Mm -hmm. So ours is a little different. Uh, We have a different path to go. We don't just eliminate a food and and we're seizure free. So um, tell me a little bit about, if you don't mind, share with us a little bit about the story of uh, how you came into your diagnoses and what that journey has been like. Oh man, where do I, where do I start there? Um, I guess uh, I, I guess I kind of see it like there was just like this five years, like from 2015 to 2020, that just was kind of the change, the whole shift. Uh, you know, like I said, 2015 uh, was a rough year. Uh, I you know lost a child at the beginning of the year, and uh, that's kind of how that started. And by the end of it, I had gotten into a relationship uh, in a state six hours away from everybody, from my family, my friends, and everybody uh, into a toxic relationship that ultimately, by the time Christmas rolled around of 2015, uh, I had my first seizure that week. Mm. Uh, scared me to death. Had, you know, no idea what was happening to me. Um, and then for probably at least the next month and a half, um, I was having them at a rate that I, I couldn't even keep track. I was having multiple a day, every day. Um, and then not too long after they did the whole rigmarole of, of, you know, giving you seizure medication and trying to figure out what it is. Somebody eventually finally said, these are pseudo seizures. This is what this is. I said, oh, okay. Uh, and then the new challenge started after that, which was every doctor that shrugged their shoulders at me afterwards and said, yeah, we know what it's called, but uh, otherwise... You're kind of on your own. Yeah. So uh, eventually, after enough of that, I, I did kind of take things into my own hands. And, and in my, my journey of kind of getting better, I've uh, embraced uh, spirituality a lot, Buddhism. That's really helped me out a lot in life. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's mostly been that. It's mostly been the spirituality side of things. I think that can kind of tie into a lot of of Mm -hmm. what I've done over the past few years. I guess I dabbled into that in psychology very heavily and Mm -hmm. basically just, uh, I did take on that attitude of, okay, I'll do it myself. (laughs) I'll, I'll figure out how to, uh, how to fix this problem. Yes, absolutely. We are very much mind, body, and spirit. So I mean, we really have to take care of all the components of our health. It's not just about our physical health. It's not just about our emotional health. It is very much about our spiritual health. Mm-hmm. So we had a great conversation on your show about that. Yes, that did. was pretty cool. That was unplanned. And I just love that, <laughs> that little dialogue back and forth. So tell me about your journey of awareness. I mean, so one of the things that I, I learned is that becoming aware is such a, a major step in itself. Mm-hmm. And you, I think you touched on it a little bit of when we were speaking before, but Tell me what that looked like in your journey. Um, just aware of like the power of awareness. Uh, just in general, in life. Um, yeah. 
uh it it the power of awareness can can really change everything i mean it's it's so much of life is about perspective uh you're you kind of make your own reality depending on on how you view the world so i mean if you're constantly looking at the negative then yeah you're probably going to be living in a pretty negative world uh that's going to be your your focus but if you're aware of of some of the the bigger things going on around you i guess it's just it just feels a little easier i suppose mm. uh i think it's easier to um for me it's, it seems like patterns sometimes i feel like i can just kind of I, I i know where things are going because i pay attention i'm I, i'm more aware it's easier to to help people and to uh uh work with them through their problems when i have a better understanding of what they're going through uh, i know we talked about a situation i had yesterday and that was, you know, at a, at a certain point, instead of just huffing away and, and everything like that, I gave, I gave him time because even though I was upset, I knew he wanted me to stick around uh, because I understood what he was going through. And, you know, at a certain time of my life before I didn't know him very well, I wasn't a fan. I, mm-hmm. I, I wasn't a fan of him, but I know him better now. And I do, I do consider him a friend and I do have much love for him. Uh, even when we, but heads like that but that that understanding is what helps me stick around i think that kind of answers your question you asked me earlier a little bit too about being around inflammatory people uh understanding is what gets me through those situations yeah um, and it the, sounds the, like a lot of compassion came yeah. through your understanding because yeah. you're, you're meeting them where where they're at and mm-hmm. uh and not forcing them to be somebody different than they are in that moment but just again meeting them not saying like not what's the word um not being a codependent where we're making allowances yeah it's fine you can be who you are Mm -hmm. but you know really same setting those boundaries like i understand where you're at it's still not okay to talk to us like that yeah. Um, but I see the real you. Mm-hmm. So that's really cool. Yeah. I love how you were talking about the patterns because that was, oh my goodness. I, I love that in my own journey. All of a sudden, when I be, started to become aware of things, I did. I started noticing patterns all over the place. Mm-hmm. I mean, spiritually, emotionally, even um, even patterns in nature, which was really, really fascinating. Mm-hmm. And then how it tied to the emotional um, emotional element of where we each were and what we, the patterns that we each did. So whatever Mm -hmm. we were locked into, and for me, and and not everyone's of the same mind, but I personally feel like I'm on a growth pattern and I want to continue to grow until the day that I close my eyes for the last time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is my desire because I never want to be the same person because I know that the issues, you know, that, I have right now versus last year versus the year before. And I know the only way to become different is to become aware of my hard wiring and Mm -hmm. the evidence of that is in the patterns. So what do I see reoccurring in my life over and over again? And you hear people sometimes will have friends and they have the same issues all the time, same type of boyfriend girlfriend issues yeah. i mean it's the, yeah. it's a repeat yeah so but we also have that so it, it just being yeah. just being calm pause hitting pause yeah. um i always say I, I learned this early just suspend judgment mm-hmm. in order to go into a curiosity mode you have to suspend judgment and not label something as good or bad but just see it for what it is mm-hmm and uh but awareness is so powerful for making those leaps yeah well just what you said there with the the people who seem to be stuck in patterns and you know it's the classic uh all men are the same all women are the same it's like no just all the ones you tend to gravitate towards (laughs) yeah it's just it's just the pattern it's just the pattern is all it is yes exactly and when i change i notice that the people that I gravitated towards changed. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you know, that we don't get well right away. (laughs) It's not that simple. So I would meet new people and they would reflect where I was at that time. And I'm like, Oh, I guess I'm not there yet. Mm -hmm. So just keep on my, it was just an encouragement. Keep on your journey. (laughs) I've learned for me, as I've 
because I want to say it was the end of 2017 is when I really started diving in deep to the spirituality side of things. And I really had a lot of improvement over those next couple of years. And of course, I'm just wanting to share the knowledge with everybody. Mm. I'm wanting to help people. <laughs> and I think where I'm at now with things is I'm learning how to best utilize this information now and to spread this knowledge the best way. Uh, because before I would sit down and I'd tell people, okay, and, and I would let them know this is what works for me. You know, I don't necessarily know if it'll work for you, but I would tell them and just kind of get a little excited about it. But then, you know, I knew in my head and I, I just knew in my heart as I'm telling them, I can see it in their eyes. And I knew from past experience, I can tell you this a million times over and you're still not going to believe me. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, uh, so I'm getting to a point now where I'm learning how to incorporate these things to where it is going to benefit the other person. I'm not just telling them mm. here, here are the practices that I do here, are the things that I, you know, the, the changes of perspective and this, that, the other, I, I actively try to meet somebody where they're at. I, you know, mm -hmm. just uh, things like that. And, uh, I've been trying to put a lot of stuff into practice, uh, more so than just practicing what I preach essentially yeah and uh there are times where I, I tell people hey sorry if I come off like confrontational or something I'm just I'm trying some things out uh as far as my my spirituality goes uh sometimes people are my test subjects and they don't realize it <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I I I very much understand that part when I, um, when I was coming into my faith and I was like an excited bunny, I was just jumping all over the place because yeah, I yeah. knew the impact yeah. that it made in my life. And it was just tr truly my immaturity in expressing that I didn't know my audience. I didn't mm -hmm. know how to convey it. I didn't understand about meeting people where they're at and maybe giving people bite-sized pieces and, versus like throwing the whole elephant at them right yeah. so I, I totally understand and and uh, really and regret that part of that journey because that was yeah. uh it wasn't my best times um but I, I like now um much like yourself you've kind of come into it and you're living it in front of people as opposed to having to say it all the time and mm -hmm. having people be able to ask you questions instead of I don't know. For me, I just always felt like I was spouting off, you know, like getting on yeah. my soapbox, <laughs> so to speak. That's that's definitely what it was there at first. Uh, yeah. Whether whether it be that that spirituality or me just being so filled with this newfound positivity and and love for life, I suppose I've always had this deep love for life. But uh, I remember going to like a friend's uh, concert. And afterwards, I couldn't shut up about how great they were the rest of the night. And I'm, I'm sure it was getting old after a while, but I just, I had to let them know, no, you were, you were great. Like, and this is why, and it was, and uh, I just, I was just very excited about spreading the love, spreading the positivity, I guess. Right. So I definitely That's understand funny. that. <laughs> yes. It's funny, my, I have a friend and uh, she, we've known each other for 20 years. When I hit that place, where things were changing, my seizures had stopped. I was really in that infant stage of understanding why and really coming into my spirituality and, mm -hmm. and understanding. And I, she had to kind of cut me off for a little bit because it was too much. <laughs> I mean, we're still best of friends yeah. and everything has, yeah. has come back. But it was funny because it was too much. It was just like this, this bursting. So I had to settle a little bit. I had to, mm -hmm. you know, I was percolating maybe yeah. at that time and I needed to settle a little bit, but so I want to come back to that, that uh, thought of the rewiring of our brain. Mm -hmm. So you were talking about, uh, and I kind of labeled it as being hardwired certain ways. Right. Which ways did you see, and I'll share for myself as well, but which ways did you see for the benefit of our audience that you were hardwired in certain ways and that you needed to step back in order to say, this doesn't benefit me anymore. This is no longer healthy and I'm choosing to disengage from here and um, go in this path because this is natural and this is good. This is beneficial. Um. Well, that's definitely what, what a lot of, uh, especially this past year, 
has been about for me. Uh, I kind of said 2020 was all about freeing myself of, you know, other people's thoughts and stuff and making sure that if I was doing something that I was doing it for me, that I wasn't doing it because I felt somebody else wanted me to do it or it was, you know, serving somebody mm -hmm. else's purpose in, in, in that kind of way. Um, but I, definitely one of the first times that, uh, well, one of the first times was actually in like seventh grade. <laughs> I actually recall uh, uh, making a big change. I remember in seventh grade, we moved from Tennessee to back to Illinois. And I just remembered not really liking, you know, who I was, I guess, at the time. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, I, the classic, you move and you, you reinvent yourself. But it was more so about, I didn't, I, you know, I felt sad all the time. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I felt like I was bullied and picked that. And I, I just adopted this whole new attitude about things. So that was definitely one of the earliest times. But as far as the things that fed into later anxiety and stuff, uh, mm -hmm. mine was my, my big heart. Uh, my my love for love and and just you know wanting to find somebody and everything it's gotten me in plenty of situations uh, and that's definitely attributed to plenty of my mental health is just mm -hmm. you know we talked about boundaries and uh, you know mixed with the superhero complex of mine where you know uh, I just want to stick around and help somebody who doesn't want to be helped uh, I had to I had to learn those lessons kind of one at a time mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as as they kind of kept happening in different ways, uh, sometimes worse than others, I, I finally did get to a point where I said, okay, this is what I don't want anymore. This is what I don't want. Um, and so uh, I, it's nothing to celebrate, I guess, but I, I broke up with the last two uh, relationships because I, I recognized it was not good for me. Good for uh, you. So it's definitely, it's a weird thing to celebrate, but I, no, it, it was something that huge. I noticed, like, yeah. you know, in, in a different time, I would have told myself like, no, you know, you, you have to make it work. You have to mm. this, that, the other, you know, do it out of love, this, that, the other. And, you know, I, I, I realized, and kind of the same thing with the situation yesterday, it's, I, I read this great thing uh, in this book, it was about, uh, it's called The Dude and the Zen Master. It's Jeff Bridges and, and his mm -hmm. buddy. And uh, they talk about um, like rough situations, essentially, just these, these hard uh, situations, the hard talks, uncomfortable scenarios. And uh, they equate it to quicksand. And they just say, the more you struggle, the harder the situation is gonna become. Uh, so lean into the uncomfortable. And I, I read that about three years ago now, and that is something that I think about often. And it has proven to be very true. Anytime mm. I have entered into an uncomfortable situation, anytime I've needed to confront somebody, whether it was these, these exes when it came time to say, I can't do this and here's why, mm -hmm. uh, the last one really broke my heart because I was planning on marrying this girl. I, I was absolutely in love with her. And so it hurt me so much that she was so hurtful to me. And the fact that I was the one that had to say, okay, I, I can't do this anymore. Uh, and, you know, I didn't end it on a, on a bad note. You mm -hmm. know, I, I, I wanted her to know I have to do this. You know, I have to, to, to go. And it was uncomfortable, but I leaned into it and, yeah. and, and I, I stuck to it, uh, you know, yesterday, like, like I said, people say sometimes, oh, don't don't confront somebody because they'll they'll get upset. Well, of course they're going to get upset. And is that because you don't want to upset them or you don't want to deal with them being upset? Is right. is the is the big question? Because uh, that can be uncomfortable too. You know, mm -hmm. nobody likes being upset, but nobody likes dealing with the person who's upset either. Who is like, right. oh, great, now we have to be in the room with this guy. Um, but. You know, I, I, just leaning into it, knowing that mm -hmm. I, I'm going to lean into this situation right now, just be a part of this uncomfortable situation, and we're yeah. going to embrace it, we're going to get through it, and on the other side of it, it's been my experience so far that things are usually better than if you, if you stew on it, and you're passive aggressive about it, yeah. and you, you will continue to struggle, so... That's awesome. It's funny. Mine is actually very similar to that. Mine is about my perception, my hardwired belief about suffering 
Mm-hmm. So in the past, I would say that, and I didn't necessarily believe this for other people, but I believe that I suffered personally. Um, I didn't have a very high self-esteem. So I okay. believe that I suffered because something was wrong with me, that, um, that God didn't like me, <laughs> that uh, I was destined to suffer mm-hmm. as opposed to the reality that we all suffer. Suffer is yeah. part of our condition here. And when I looked at it and I would suffer, you know, it would take me so far back that um, I, I just felt like cosmically I, I got a pow pow, right? <laughs> so I just felt like I just got punished. It mm-hmm. feels terrible as opposed to this is what happens. It's my response to it. So I'll give an example. Um, last, I, I got a flat tire last week and I didn't really think anything of it. I had just gotten an oil change and I thought maybe they, you know, they left something off. I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But then I come to find out that it was an intentional flat tire. Somebody uh, punctured my tire mm. with a, a key and left the key in there. So, and it was only because, so here's that beautiful thing about suffering, right? We lived in a messed up world. There are messed up people in this world and it's not, it's not because of something about me, right? It's, this didn't happen because of who I am. This is because of somebody else's choices. Mm -hmm. But as I looked at it and through this new lens, I realized that I had just been, I just experienced a huge blessing in fact, because I really felt like my, my intuition was telling me I need to go get an oil change. So I was on my way somewhere and I just felt like this nudge, like I called my God nudge, that I need to go get an oil change right afterwards. And I did. So, and it was minutes after leaving that my tire went completely flat. Now, when you get an oil change, they fill up your tires, right? And that caused the expansion, which caused the release of the key. The key was just hanging in there. And as I sat and I I dwelled on that for a moment, I realized that in two days time, I would have been driving down the expressway for about an hour. My tires would have naturally heated up Mm -hmm. and expanded, which would have set off the key releasing. And that would have been such a worse situation. So in that moment, even though I know that somebody you know, not knowing, I maybe they know me, maybe they don't. I don't know. I don't have any known enemies. But knowing that somebody intentionally inflicted harm and pain into my life, mm-hmm. I still walked away with such a huge gratitude. One, mm-hmm. that I've, I've gotten away from being distracted by that. Because if I would have been distracted, I would have missed out on the blessing. I would have missed out on the fact that I was actually incredibly spared Right. So it was $158 to, to replace the tire, whatever, you know, like yeah. I, it could have been really, really bad a couple of days later. So just my perspective of what suffering is and what it's meant to do mm-hmm. has completely shifted. And that has changed the game as for me. You know, I mean, yeah. it is no longer something that infiltrates my life. It's something that exists. Like if I get a cold or a flu, it exists. Those things happen. I live in a world with germs. <laughs> I, I actually, uh, very similar to that, kind of made that same shift. I, my, my saying for it is uh, uh, pretty much I got to a point where I quit saying, why is this happening to me? And saying, this is happening. Just, that was the only change. I just, mm. I quit thinking, oh, oh, why me? And mm. I just thought, uh, all right okay this is this is happening and that's 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 fine it just is what it is and like I said with with yesterday's situation I really uh, I was grateful I really was I was grateful for having a bad day yesterday and I think that alone like you know I've always been good about seeing the good and the bad like that Mm -hmm. Um, but yesterday really like I just I just felt that growth I just felt Mm -hmm. that uh, I mean the fact that on a day like that in the past you know even not so distant past probably Mm -hmm. would have just crawled off home and got into bed and just kind of been blah the rest of the day right but uh, the fact that you know there was this big kind of blow up I had a seizure I, you know, I bounced back, we, we did more work. And then right after that, I get a call that my rent check was lost and I have to, okay, well now I have to deal with that. 
Uh, and then it was just, you know, one of those days where everything kept getting thrown at me, but something I noticed I was doing was I, I kept laughing and I was like, I might be hysterical right now. I don't know, like from everything, but I, I, I really, I genuinely thought it was funny. Uh, just because I was due, I was due for something to happen. And as it kept happening, I just kept laughing. I was just like, this is so amusing to me that, uh, right. and, and I, I think just getting to the point where I can smile about a bad day like that. I mean, that's. That's a huge, huge thing for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I love that. I've, I've shared my whole, I mean, I have the uh, key to show everybody. <laughs> I'm like, look at this. And I get to share this perspective shift and yeah. how much joy I have now. And I couldn't have had that, you know, I mean, cause I'll be honest, but it immediately happened. I was like, that's really messed up. All right. But the more I, 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 something that you said, I relate to, instead of saying, why is this happening? Somebody shared with me before, they said, instead of saying, you know, God, why is this happening? And say, God, what do you want me to learn from this? Right. And so that, mm -hmm. that takes that application of our misperception, our hard wiring about suffering. And it really applies the fact that suffering is happening. What's the next step? You know, what mm -hmm. can I learn? Because there's always something that we can learn. It's such, I, yeah. it's an exciting life. You know I mean? Yeah. Suffering is not exciting. I'm not suggesting no. that. So this is something new that I'm, I'm thinking about for the channel. Whether you're at the beginning of your journey, whether you've overcome the seizures, wherever you're at, mm -hmm. um, the people who I'm having on my, on, on the show, I want them to share one thing of hope because this channel is all about hope. It's all about offering our hope and our experience to the next person because we need hope. It's our yeah. fuel, it's our motivator. So what would you say, Chase, is one bit of hope that you can give to our viewers? One bit of hope. Uh, well, I mean, I do, I completely agree with you that, uh, that hope helps a lot because I mean, that's, uh, that's what you were for me when I came across your, your mm -hmm. YouTube channel. Um, it's one of those things that uh, I still feel like I'll probably live with it my whole life. And maybe I will get to a point where I never have a, a seizure again. Um, but I, I, I've had to, to, to make a choice to look at it positively uh, I do consider, I think what I was going to say earlier was that I do consider it to kind of be my, I, I, I consider myself lucky to be able to learn from life and, and to recognize bad situations as lessons mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm trying to be shown something. I'm trying to be taught something. I'm trying to be pushed towards something. Uh, you know, a lot of last year, um, and, it, and it's a weird thing to say that I consider myself lucky to see the world this way, but I really do because of how many people I know who don't, it, it seems to be the average that most mm -hmm. people don't, don't look at the world this way. And especially with the year like 2020, it was terrible. All things considered, uh, there was, there's quite a, a bit of bad that happened, yeah. but at the same time, I had one of the greatest years I, I could have possibly had um, Me too. It, it, I, a lot of a lot of, of big things came out of it um, but a lot of bad stuff happened in 2020 personally too and those mm -hmm. personal moments uh, I had I had several moments that just kind of felt like the universe was talking to me I just I kept feeling I think we kind of touched on it a little bit the last time we talked where I felt like I was being pushed towards the thing I love to do uh, mm -hmm. The last job I got that I was working last year, I even I said when I got that job, this will be my last job before I move on to my career as a filmmaker. And it was there was a year gap where I wasn't working, but it was the last job I had before <laughs> I, I got to start living my dreams. But uh, every time something came up in 2020 where, you know, I couldn't work or, you know, I was I was hitting these problems. Uh, I, I, I felt like I was being pushed somewhere, you know, I, I felt like sometimes I was, you know, uh, in a, in a strange way, even sometimes having the seizures, I felt like, you know, they kept happening at work and eventually it took me away from work. It kind of forced me to go and, and be in a place where I had to focus, you know, yeah. uh, in a sense is, it's just sort of like, almost like something inside of me tugging me away when it's like, no, 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 no come over here. Don't, you know. It sort of yeah. feels like that. So if you can just be more aware, you know, yeah. look around, it's not that bad. 
And really I love is. what you said. It's about choice, right? We have mm-hmm. a choice. We can choose to look at the cup half full or half empty. And I, I don't really like that one. But right. I, what I do like is we can choose the red pill or the blue pill. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the matrix. We yeah. can see life how it is in reality or we can choose to see it through the filter that um other people make it to be you know Mm -hmm. whether it's politics economy uh whatever it is Mm -hmm. i want to choose how it is in reality i don't want to look at through it through anyone else's filter i want truth and only truth the hard truth and, um, and go from it from there, learn and grow from there. And that's really important. I know that we come to that at different stages in our life, but just knowing that you have the power to choose mm-hmm. is, is empowering. Yeah. I can, this happen, I can choose to look at it this way and I can choose to feel about it this way, or I can choose to just let my emotions uh, hijack me and take me on the road that it's taken me every other time. But mm-hmm. yes, the power of choice is the power to change. That's awesome. Well, thank yeah. you so much. That that's Absolutely. powerful. I'm very excited about that. Yeah, and and I'd love to you know encourage I mean people to 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 be themselves in that same regard. Mm. Uh, it's very difficult because you do tend to listen to other people even when you don't do you don't realize it. So I mean, not only be yourself, but if you don't know who you are you know, figure that out, figure out who you are and, and be that person. And, and don't worry about what other people have to say about it, because plenty of people will have things to say and, and try to keep you, keep you in line, I suppose. Yes. But, keep you in their box. Yes. Yes. We're going to break out of boxes. We're going to have a box burning party, <laughs> not a real one, just a figurative one. <laughs> right. But yes, that's awesome. Well, if you were encouraged, please leave a comment below. For sure, check out the Mental Mondays with uh, Mental Health Mondays. They, they can Mondays. be pretty mental. They haven't yes. been so great lately. <laughs> we, we're trying to improve. Sometimes it never fails. Mental Health Mondays are always the day I'm, I'm sick or it's been a long day or something. So we really oh, need that. Like, I'm it's just ready challenging. For it's challenging. <laughs> I think it it's, is. It's encouraging because it's putting you in positions where you really are authentic, which is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, we we try to just be ourselves over there at the old Chase Chip show. Yes, which is so awesome. So there's going to be a link below. Um, If you if you are looking for hope or if you're looking for encouragement, go ahead and check out Mental Health Mondays. And thank you so much, Chase, for joining us. Thank you for your transparency, your honesty, just your journey, sharing your journey with us and especially sharing your hope. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right. Well. Thank you for joining us, everyone, and we will see you next time.